everyone, it's Cindy. Welcome back to Studio Lou. So I'm here today with day 13 of Defemerember. You can learn more about Defemerember down below in my description box. Um, today the prompts are acetate and banner. So let's get into this. The animal for today is seahorse. So I've been playing with um, a project that I'm working on for my Patreon actually about like kind of watercolor animals and so for the longest time I've been taking photographs and putting them into my um, Procreate and doing a bunch of editing and so I actually have a seahorse already that I've been working on. So this is the seahorse that I want to use today um, and I think when I think about a banner my favorite kind of a banner is a bunting. You know what a bunting is? Like those little triangles that all string together. I really love the little buntings. I think they're so cute. So that's where my brain is going with this today. Um, so what I want to do first is actually play with the acetate. So I have here, this is an acetate, a transparency film. So what I want to do with this transparency film is play with a bit of alcohol ink. So I have a couple different kinds of alcohol ink, the really lovely alcohol pearl inks, and then just a couple random colors of alcohol ink. So when I look at my image here, I want to use blues, greens, and purples primarily. And so I'm going to do a bit of a a semi dangerous technique here of um, using acetate and a heat gun <laughs> not recommended not recommended well no just kidding you can do this safely and I'll show you I'll show you how so I'm first going to just cut my piece of acetate in half um, with my scissors that I put across the room for some reason hold on are they over here no one second Okay, sorry, I'm too lazy to pause. Okay, so I just wanna cut this down to about half. Okay, we'll set this aside. And the reason why is because I just want a manageable piece so that I can fold this over and know that it will be totally covered, okay? So I'm going to um, maybe do both of these pieces, but I, I will do them one at a time. So first you just make sure you give your alcohol inks a good shake because especially the pearlized ones or the ones with like mica powders, they really settle to the bottom. So we just shake, shake, shake. Ooh, and my blue is open a little bit. Look at that, I'm so terrible. Um, I was playing with this this morning a little, so I, uh, you know, the irresponsible person that I am, I didn't put the lid back on. <laughs> so we're gonna have a little mess, but this is actually what I wanna do anyways. I just wanna spatter this down. So not, not a big deal. This will come off my hands. Also, if you've been around long enough, you know that my hands usually end up looking a wreck anyways. I'm not like as well, um, <laughs> well groomed as Barbara's beautiful nails. I'm. I'm just not, <laughs> but it's okay. Okay, so we're just going to put a few different colors of this alcohol ink, and you can see, I don't know if you can see, but I don't wanna lift it, how the pearls are kind of like, the pearly ones are sort of dancing, like that you can see the sparkles working away. These ones don't do that. These are just regular um, inexpensive alcohol inks that you use like in resins and stuff. So a little bit of purple. I also have some white and then I'll throw some of the pink down. I like these Tim Holtz alcohol inks a lot. Actually, they're really nice. There we go. And then the white, I don't know how much it will really do. It'll give a little bit of a cloudy effect maybe. We'll see. So then, after you've dripped alcohol ink on your acetate, um, you're going to fold down this um, parchment and just kind of give it a little smush. Not a huge one, just a little one, right? Like that. Um, just gonna wipe this with my fingers. Okay, then we get our heat gun. Now, why is it not a good idea to use acetate and heat gun? Because it will melt the acetate. However, the parchment, it does prevent the curling up and melting. So we can go ahead, don't get too close, stay back a little bit. 
And you're going to see the inks moving around under there. We're just trying to dry this up a little bit. And also to mix the colors around. Okay, and then I'll stop for a second. Just kind of mush it about a bit. And then I'll open it and you'll see it's still quite wet here, okay? So, we're just going to flip it over. And I'm going to put this back down. And I'm going to just apply it one more time. And see there's a little bit less movement happening now. Things are kind of drying now. As you see it get a little lighter. It's drying either to the parchment, which will also be fun to play with, um, as well as the acetate. So now we open it up and pull up our acetate. And then I'm going to lay it down here and get a piece of paper, potentially one that I might want to use. Let's grab this scrap here that has fun color on it already and just um, put it on the paper and fold the paper. Because the paper is, you know, a little different than the parchment in that it will soak up what's wet still. Okay, so now we have this on our acetate, which is kind of fun. I did another piece a little earlier today, and it looks like this, just a little strip of it. So um, I ended up adding a few more layers of color to this one, but I think I don't want to on this one because what I'm thinking about is with this, I want to use it on top of my seahorse to create like a nice um, overlay, right? And then this one I might use to create my banner. So first thing is first, we need to do some trimming. So let me grab my trimmer. We can get this out of the way now. So let's trim the seahorse to the shape that I think I want. I'm going to lay this back down on top so I can get the right, I kind of want, where do I want that? Right there. Can I trim these together? Will this work? Let's try. Yes, we can be brave. this blue finger oh my goodness okay so that's good <laughs> all right so what I want to do now I think um, hold on one second I'm gonna grab a supply so I think I might make this into a bit of a shaker card because I like the iridescent ish feeling look to this um, so I've got this very scary glitter it's like do not spill me. So what I'm going to do is go to my sewing machine and stitch three sides of this. Okay. I will be right back. All right. So I've stitched three sides and you know, when I got to thinking about seahorses and what they remind me of, I feel like they remind me of like those pens that you used to see in like, I guess the seventies and eighties are like the vintage pens that are filled with like liquid or like those pouches that had like this kind of sparkly stuff on the inside. That's what it got me thinking about, and it was like an, in a liquid. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this. That's probably good. And then we're going to just very carefully close this and redouble bag it because <laughs> I will get this everywhere. Holy moly. There we go. Okay. Now give it a shake. 
and it's just going to add. It'll be sort of like a little shaker card, but like not super shakery, but it's going to add a little bit. Just spread it around. Make sure that it travels around. Sometimes these things like to stay together. So you got to kind of give them a little jiggle jaggle here. Okay, so those are all in there. This is so crackly and fun. And I like that I can see the seahorse's head. It's got like that space that isn't very inked. Um, so I think that gives it some nice crackle and some nice dimension. So I'm going to go now and we are going to sew this and then I'm going to prep the banner. Okay, I'm back and this is all closed up now. So now we're going to go ahead and create this banner. So like I said, I want to create like a bunting. So I'm going to start by just clipping off the edge of this long rectangle, get rid of this little, get rid of this little triangle. Then I'm just going to cut triangles out of the acetate like this. And this was inked in slightly different colors. going to go across and create like these little bunting flags for our banner. Okay. Now what I want to do with these is I actually want to stitch them all together. Um, so what I'm going to do is go to my sewing machine. I'm going to stitch across the top and then let a few more stitches go stitch across the top, a few more stitches. So it's going to create like a little line of stitches in between all the triangles. So I'll be right back after I do that. Okay, so I finished stitching the banner together. Let me just get a piece of paper so that you can see it. There it is. Okay, so I have a black and a pink thread in my machine and you see how you can see the twist. It's like a candy stripe. Um, so yeah, I really think that's so cute. I mean, it's so hard to see with my terrible hands here, but <laughs> look at that. Isn't that pretty? So what I'm going to do with the, with the banner now is just use it to decorate my ephemera. So the important thing about when you do these banners, right? So you, you begin your stitching here stitch across, then make a few more stitches, add the next one right tight up to your needle, stitch across and then repeat, right? And then tie your two ends at the end so that the stitches don't come out. But I'm not going to try to fuss with any glue. Um, with this, I'm literally just going to lay this down the way that I feel like I want to. And then I'm going to stitch around the whole thing um, because it's just, I don't know how glue and acetate will, will cooperate. So what I want to do is lay this banner down, I think, in a way that I'm going to find aesthetically pleasing. Okay, maybe like so. And actually, you know, I think I want to do that. And I'm going to leave a piece of it hanging off the side. So I think that's really fun. So that's, I think, how I want this to be like this. It doesn't, you can see all the main important details of the seahorse. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go back over to my sewing machine and I'm going to add stitching around a few different spots. Um, I may actually stitch right through over this line and then add another backing to the back of this to just cover the stitches. So I'll be back after I'm done stitching. Okay, stitching is now completed. So what I did was still left this side long here. I think I will cut the thread up here. And this one, and maybe the bottom ones, there we go. Any that are just thread I'm gonna cut, but I'll leave obviously these ones long because they have the, um, the acetate. You just make sure that this is definitely tied. In a second knot just in case. There we go. Yep, yeah, right there. And I can trim that too. Okay. There we are. So what I did was I stitched around down to here. Then I followed the, the natural kind of line across here in this kind of S. Then I just folded these up to give them a little bit of, you know, sticky outiness 
and that will lay down once you, you know, put it in a journal, but it does give it a bit of a dimension when you, you know, are looking at it. Um, so then what I want to do is just cover up the stitching on the back and that's easy peasy. Just going to take some art glitter glue here. If it will cooperate. I think my bottle is jammed up for the 10th time today. <laughs> I haven't been using my glue frequently enough. I've been leaving it. This is the ongoing saga of our glitter glue. There we go. Ooh, that's a lot of glue. There we go. I'm just going to use my finger to smoosh it a little just because there's a lot in that in a few areas here. I have to scrub my hands obsessively anyways after all of this, right? So why not? Make it worth it. Then I'm going to line, oops, not on this side, this side. I'm going to line this up on this piece of scrap paper here that I've had hanging about so that I won't have to cut the one edge away. And my fingers. Just give this all the smush smush. Okay. This is on an old piece of ledger from the 1920s a scrapbook. And uh, I'm slowly using up this old ledger. Okay, get rid of that. And then we have our backing. And then if you wanted to go around it one more time, you could uh, with the sewing machine, but I actually don't think I need to. I'm, I'm pretty happy with how it looks. So hopefully you can see the details. I know it might be hard on the camera, but I do see the seahorse's face here. I've got all these inky fun colors. I see my original watercolory, you know, marks, and I see all those sparkles that I put in. So this is a pretty colorful and busy fun piece. I'm happy with it and I hope you had fun. I also think it's pretty easy to just play with like acetate and alcohol ink, right? Um, you don't have to paint your hands, but you know, if you want to be a real alcohol ink person, then you have to paint your hands. So thank you for joining me again today and I will see you tomorrow for date number 14. Bye everyone.